In this video, you'll see how to connect a Skyhoy panel to a DMX node using the Artnet DMX protocol. We'll end up controlling two lamps from the faders on the panel. Let's have a look at the setup. Today, we're using a Waveboard Mini, a Showtech DMX node, and two lamps. But this could be any of our Blue Pill products, and it could be any DMX node and lamps. Here are the steps we'll cover. OK, let's get going. Cabling and addresses. I've connected Ethernet cables from a switch to the Waveboard Mini and the DMX node. I also set static IP addresses on the two devices. This is done on the settings page in Reactor and using the buttons and display on the DMX node. I also have internet access. This is needed when downloading new device cores. And finally, I connected XLR cables from the DMX node to the lamps. I set the first lamp to listen from channel 1 and the second lamp to listen from channel 101. My lamps listen to 16 channels for movement, colors and so on, but we'll only use a few in this demo. For example, to control red light on the first lamp, we send values to channel 8. To control blue light on lamp 2, we'll send values to channel 110. The values we send are from 0 to 255, scaling from turn it off to all way up. Alright, cabling is done and now we turn to the Skyhoy configuration. Open Reactor. Skyhoy panels are network based and fully self contained. And they can control many different devices simultaneously. You can see the full list of the 400 plus devices we control on the webpage devices.skahoy.com. Configurations are handled using a web browser on your computer, tablet or smartphone. So we just enter the IP address of the Waveboard Mini. Here we see Reactor, the configuration manager for Bluepill. Add Artnet DMX device core. To control a device, it must be added to the project. In the right side of the screen, we click Add Device. By default, Reactor will auto discover devices on your network if it's able to. You can also click Add manually to see the full list of compatible devices. I'll enter DMX to filter the list. Now we see the Artnet DMX device core. I want to control a single DMX node on a static IP address, so I select Unicast. Next, we see the settings window. Here, we enter the IP address of the DMX node. DMX can organize channels into Net, Subnet and Universe. But for our small setup, we only need one universe and click Save. Now. I had hoped to see the DMX node as connected. But some models, including mine, do not respond to the Are You Alive request, so it appears to be unconnected. To handle this, we'll just disable ArtPole. Click the device core name to open the settings window. Disable Check Connection and click Save. Now it says connected even though it has no idea. OK, only thing needed now is to assign commands to the faders and buttons on the Waveboard Mini. This is called the configuration, and you'll see two ways of doing this. Use a pre-made default configuration. In the configuration menu, you see the pre-made default configurations. They provide easy ways to map commands and logic across the panel. And there are fast ways to get started. We'll use audio and light control. It can handle a wide range of devices, including DMX. And all configuration is done right here on the homepage in the channel config. I want to control lamp 1, red, green and blue from the first three faders. So I click New three times. 
First, we select what to control from the list. In this case, an Artnet DMX channel. And we copy this to the other faders. Next, we point to Artnet device ID 1, just as we see it in the devices list, and copy it to the others. And last, we set the channels. This is 8 for red, 9 for green, and 10 for blue. And we set the colors as well. Let's check it out. Alright, we now control lamp 1 colors on the faders. So, let's add lamp 2 to the same faders. On each fader, we right click the channel and select Add Cell. Here we enter 108, 109, and 110, which are the lamp 2 colors. Let's see. Oh, yes, we now control both lamps simultaneously. Finally, I want to show you how page buttons are automatically created when we have more than four faders. Click New to create three new channels. The first we leave blank, and the next we use for strobe. Select Artnet DMX channel and copy it. Select ID1 and copy it. And select the strobe channels, 7 for lamp 1 and 107 for lamp 2. Now we see the two page buttons. On page 1 we still control the colors, and on page 2 we control strobe. Nice one! The audio and light configuration is really versatile. Each fader can control very different things such as audio mixers, vMix buses or multiple DMX channels, all at the same time. Create a new custom configuration. Sometimes you want to make your own custom configuration from scratch, having it follow your exact workflow. And this is the last thing we'll cover. Open the configuration menu and select Create Custom Configuration. Name it and save it. The panel is now totally blank. To assign commands, we go to the configuration page. Here you see a graphic version of the panel. Just like before, we'll assign lamp 1 colors to the first three faders. Drag across the faders to select them all. In the inspector, we see a list of commands we can assign. These include system, navigation, and all installed devices, in our case, the Unicast. We select DMX, Transmit. Device 1 is our only DMX node, and Universe 1 is our only universe, so we only need to set the channel. Here we start by entering 8, red color. Then click Batch Edit to open the multi-editor, and simply plus the channels for green and blue on fader 2 and 3, and click Done. Now we control the colors from the faders. We can make it look nicer by doing the same thing on the encoders above. Drag across to select them. Choose DMX Transmit and set channel 8. Then we'll add a color. Click Show More and set Intensity On and color to Red. Finally, open Batch Edit, change the colors to green and blue and click plus plus for the channels. Yeah, it looks just like the audio and light configuration. Until now, we've used faders to send dynamic values. But before wrapping up, let's also use two buttons to send fixed values. On the first button, we'll toggle two values. This will control strobe on and off. Select the button, choose DMX Transmit, and set channel 7 for strobe. 
Now click Show More to reveal the template behaviors. Select Change by Step with limited values and enter the two options 0 for No Strobe and 180 for Medium Strobe. Let's see it in action. Oh, yeah, it's working fine. On the last button, we'll assign a multi behavior. It will send multiple values to multiple channels all at once. And it'll be our pink preset recall button. Select the button, choose DMX Transmit, and set channel 8 and 10. Now click Show More to reveal the template behaviors. Select Set Specific Value and enter the value 100. Then click Hide More. At this point, the button just control red and blue color, but we'll change that. Click Add Behavior and turn it into a multi behavior. Click Plus. Choose DMX Transmit. Channel 9, which is the green color. Then Show More. Select Set Specific Value and enter the value 0. To make it pretty, we select the Custom Feedback. Set Intensity to Dimmed. Set Color Pink and in Text Line 1, write Pink. Wow! Have a look at that! We built our own preset recall button sending multiple values to multiple channels. That's it. Now you know how to connect a Skyhoy panel to devices using the Artnet DMX protocol. You learned how to set up a default configuration and even how to make a custom configuration with your own commands. Please watch our other support videos covering Blue Pill setup and configuration. Thank you for watching.